Okay, we're going to have a look at solving equations with one inverse operation needed. So, uh, what we've got to think of is a weighing scales or a balance. When you have the same weight on both sides of weighing scales, then it is balanced instead of tipped. If you put different weights on each side, the scales will be tipped. Okay? So we think of a weighing scales, old-fashioned weighing scales. Now, let's have a look at this. If we had this weighing scales right here, and we had two five pound weights on one side and a ten pound weight on the other then the scales would be balanced. Both um, sides would be equal so we can say this uh, quantity is equal to this quantity. Okay. So as an equation is just like a scales. Five plus five is equal to ten. Right? Now if we added a two pound weight to this side, we'll add a two pound weight here, then the scales would be tipped, wouldn't they? Because this side is now heavier. So the question is, how do we make the scales balanced? How do we balance the scales? There's only one way to balance the scales now. You can either take the two off again, or if you add two to this side, and you want both sides to be the same, you've got to add two to the other side and that's the key concept okay so if we add two to both sides then the scales will once again be balanced so it's two pound weight added to both sides so we have 12 equals 12 okay let's have a look at this scales we have uh, one weight called x which is unknown we have one two three one pound weights and on this side we have one two three four five one pound weights the scales are balanced, so this quantity is equal to this quantity. How do we find the value of x? Well, it's obviously 2. We know that. But here's an example just to learn some algebra. We have x plus 3 is equal to 5. Okay. To find the value of x, we need to get rid of these three weights, don't we? Take them out. So we need to subtract 3 from this left-hand side of the equation from this side of the scales. If we subtract three weights from here, the scales are going to be tipped again, right? The only way to make them balanced is to subtract three from this side of weighing scales also. So we end up with x equals two. Now if we check our answer, two plus three is definitely equal to five. So that's the right answer. Another way to um, make both sides of the equation the same or, or to solve or to uh, make both sides of the weighing scales the same is to divide both sides by the same number. Okay, So let's just focus on this guy here. 4a equals 120. Now 4a, let's imagine that is saying 4 apples. 4 apples equal 120 cents, let's say. So how much does each apple cost? And what would you do to figure that out, right? Now, for a, for apples, is the same thing <coughs> as for times apple. Uh, it's just, you know, it's a little bit simpler just to write 4a instead of 4 times a, okay? But, um, you know, you could say I have 4 apples, there are 4 apples on the table, or you could say there are four times an apple on the table. It means the same thing. Four times an apple is the same thing as four apples. It's just another way of writing it. Okay. So in any case, if four apples cost 120 cents, how much does one apple cost? Well, what we need to do is undo multiplication by four, right? A, we've got to get the A by itself, the apple, and we've got to undo multiplying by four. And again, just imagine this uh, equal sign is, is like the middle of a scales balance, okay? And on one side you have four apples, on the other side you have 120, and the, the scales are balanced, equally balanced, right? Now to get the um, A by itself, I have to undo multiplying by four, so I need to divide by four, okay? And if I do that, and we've practiced this, the four fours cross cancel and become ones, right? So what you have essentially is one times a over one, which is just a, right? If you want to write that part out, you can. <laughs> it becomes one a over one. Now one times a is just a, 
and all over 1 makes just a. a over 1 is a, right? Now, I divided the left hand side of the scales by 4. I divided it by 4. So it's going to tip. Okay? So I have to keep the scales balanced if I want to say that things are equal, right? So in order to keep the scales balanced, what do I need to do on this side? Take a guess. I divided this side by 4, so what do I do on this side? Divide it by 4, you think? Yep. Now 4 into 12 goes 3 times. 4 into 0 goes 0 times. So you might have guessed it, but the apple costs, and one apple costs 30 cent. Four apples cost 120, one apple costs 30. And the whole thing we're trying to practice was dividing both sides of an equation by the same number, right? Now, let's have a look at this one. 30C equals 150. We can imagine that's cherries. 30 times a cherry. 30 cherries equals 150 cents. So, once again, you can say 30 cherries or you can put a multiplication in there, it means the same thing. 30 times a cherry is 150 cents. Now, what I want is I want C all by itself on the left hand side. In order to achieve that, I need to get rid of that number 30 somehow. Now, the number 30 is multiplying C. To undo multiplying, to get to cross off, I need to. I need to do the inverse operation of multiplying, which is which is dividing, right? So I need to in fact divide by by what? Divide by 30? Yep. And I've divided this side of the scales balance by 30. The equation, okay? So that means that this side of the scales balance is um lot lighter so the scales are, are not the same now they're going to tip both sides you can't say equals if both sides are not the same how do I make sure that this side is also is the same as this side what do I need to do in order to make sure that both sides are the same if I divide this side by 30 I must divide this side by 30 as well right because now then they'll still be the same both sides will be the same right so anyway the 30s cross cancel don't they and once again you get 1c over 1 which is what? 1 times c is c and c over 1 is just c, right? Um, just the same way that uh, 1 times 5 over 1 would be what? Calculate 1 times 5 over 1. That would be 5 over 1 which would make 5, right? What's 1 times 8 over 1? That's 8 over 1, which is 8. So 1 times x over 1 is what? Calculate 1 times x over 1. 1 times x makes x. And what's x over 1? 5 over 1 is 5, 8 over 1 is 8, x over 1 is x, yep, and c over 1 is c, right, anyway, so we get c equals, now you can cross the zeros off, and that's 15 over 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, right, and of course we can always check the answers on these, because we started with 30 times c equals 150, right, so what I'd like you to do is just above that write 30 times parenthesis equals 150. Okay, can you do that? So in place of C in the original equation, put a parenthesis. Now what do we get? C equals 5. So I'd like you to plug the number 5 in for C. And if both sides of the equation are the same, that means your answer is correct. So Check that equation. Are both sides the same? Multi you know, calculate the left hand side. So 30 times 5 is 150, isn't it? And that equals 150. Yes, it does. So then you draw a smiley face when you know you got the right answer, right? So C equals 5. Now, you do this one 10 equals 2B. 
In other words, two but two buttons cost ten dollars. How would you uh, how would you get B by itself? Now we know that uh, B is on the right hand side now, so we're going to end up getting B on its own over here, right? So what do you have to do to get B in its own on the right hand side? You actually have to start by dividing this side by something, don't you? Two, and the two buttons means two times a button. Two times a button costs ten cents, right? Anyway, so what would I divide by? Divide by two? Yep. So divide by two, the twos cross cancel, and I get one times b over one, which is which is b over one, which is b, right? And if I divide this side by two, what must I do to this side? Divide it by two. And what's ten over two? Five, right? And why not check our answer? Um, ten equals two, and instead of b, put a parenthesis. Two times parenthesis. B equals five, so put five here, right? Are both sides the same? Calculate the right hand side. Two times five is ten. So we have ten equals ten, and what do you do now? If both sides are the same, it means you got the right answer, and then you draw a smiley face, right? Okay, now three equals nine times d donuts. Okay, solve that one. Find d. Get d by itself. D is on the right hand side. So when you're when you have this fella figured out, you'll have d over here, right? Because you want to get rid of that nine, so to speak, right? Now it's nine times D. Nine donuts costs three dollars. What's the price of one donut, right? So how do you undo multiplying by nine? Do you divide by nine? Yes indeed. And of course the nines cross cancel, don't they? So we get one times D over one, which is D, isn't it? Now what do you do to the left hand side? Divide by divide by nine. Now, that says 3 over 9. Can we put that in lowest terms? 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 9 goes 3 times. So we have 1 over 3. 1 over 3 equals D. So what is the price of a donut? 9 donuts cost $3. The price of a donut is 1 third of a dollar. Which, by the way, if you calculate that 3 into 1, you end up with 33.33 3 and so on. Or, uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, if I, if I put no, I don't. Sorry, I end up with 0 0.333, right? If I put that into 1.000, okay? Which, in other words, is 33 cents. It's, it's approximately 33 cents, right? Because it's it's uh, zero point three three dollars. So one third of a dollar would be uh, zero point three three cents. Anyway, just for fun. So that's that one, and uh, you can check the answer on it too. Um, three equals nine times donut. Donut became a third. D equals a third. Put a third in there, right? And now you've got to multiply nine times a third. How would you do that? How do you multiply a whole number times a fraction? You turn the frac turn the whole number into a fraction as well, right? Nine over one. Multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, you get nine over three, which makes nine over three is three, isn't it? So you get three equals three. Three in the left, three in the right, draw a smiley face, that's the right answer. Okay. Okay. Uh, press pause and do this one. 20 equals 26 times y. Press pause if you need time. Try that one, then I'll do it. So do this one by yourself. So let's see. y is being multiplied by 26, and I want to get the y by itself. I want to get the letter all on its own. And it might be like uh, 26 yo-yos costs $20. What's the cost of one yo-yo? 
Anyway, divide by 26 on both on both sides. Okay. On the right hand side the 26 cross cancels and I have 1 times y over 1 which is y. On the left hand side I have 20 over 26. Can you put that in lowest terms? Well they're both even numbers so what goes into two even numbers? Well 2 probably right? 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 0 goes 0 times, 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 6 goes 3 times. So we get 10 over 13 equals y. Okay, And if we check that, that'll work out correctly as well. Try this one. 396 equals 9 times h. Now you might say that this is dollars. 396 dollars equals 9 times h, where h would be the number of hours you work. And 9 might represent 9 dollars per hour. So if you're getting paid 9 dollars per hour, and you make 396 or how many hours do you have to, to work to get 396 dollars right that could be the problem so anyway um, how do you get H on its own it's been multiplied by 9 you've got to divide right divide by 9 and what do you do on the left hand side as well divide by 9, right? So 9 to 9 goes once here and here. And on the right hand side, I get 1 times h over 1, which is h, right? Alright, so we got to divide the left hand side by 9 as well, right? So 9 into 396. You might want to write that somewhere else. 9 into 396. You know, and just take your time and do the long division. 9 into 39 it's 4 times isn't it 4 nines, 36 subtract that we get 3 bring the 6 down 9 into 36 again 4 times right 4 nines, 36 subtract and get 0 if you want to do it that far so anyhow h equals 44. So if you're getting paid nine dollars an hour you have to work 44 hours to get 396 dollars. So that, that would be that equation solved.